Today we have special guest, former prosecutor, veteran trial attorney, and friend of the show, Mark Eiglarsh, is here because we're going to talk all about the R. Kelly verdict and what it means. But first, in case you missed it, after nine hours of deliberation, a jury in New York found R. Kelly guilty on all nine okay. counts against him, including racketeering and sex trafficking. He was accused by multiple witnesses of targeting, grooming, and exploiting young women and men for his own sexual gratification. After the verdict was read, victims and attorneys spoke out. Take a look. For 30 years, we were overlooked. For 30 years, people said we were lying. For 30 years, people said this didn't occur. I feel like justice has been served. Of all the predators that I have pursued, however, Mr. Kelly is the worst. Today's guilty verdict forever brands R. Kelly as a predator who used his fame and fortune to prey on the young, the vulnerable, and the voiceless for his own sexual gratification. Wow. Okay, so Mark, I mean, finally, justice has been served. It's been a long time. So let's talk about these charges yes. that he was found guilty of, including racketeering. A lot of our viewers are confused by that, because when you hear racketeering, you think of the mob. Why was it used in this case with R. Kelly? Well, first of all, it gets them the biggest bang for their buck. I mean, when he's found guilty of this offense, he's certainly looking at a lot more time under what we call RICO. You know, that's that's real serious stuff. And we're having a few technical difficulties with uh, Mark, Argla Mark Arglarsh. We're going to get him back. But in the meantime, Erica, what was your reaction yesterday when you heard this news? You know, I, I felt like justice has finally been served. I and mean, you have to consider that the whistle was blown on this 20 years ago. I think of Sparkle, um, whose government name is Stephanie Edwards, um, who risked not only her career, but her life and her safety to speak out on behalf of her, what was her 14-year-old niece, who was the victim of R. Kelly in that infamous uh, child pornography tape. So um, when you think about how many victims have become survivors in the past 20 years since she told the world um, it just it feels ridiculous and uh, we've just let so many people down yeah I mean it's it, it's a deeper thing to get into and I almost hesitate to get into it but please do that's what the show is you about. know Sam I just wonder I, I was uh, you know obviously there's R Kelly we have the Jeffrey Epstein situation I was watching the documentary about the Olympians and seeing Facebook pages dedicated to people saying uh, and we have him back, dedicated, dedicated to people calling these girls liars and mm -hmm. prostitutes. What is it inside of us as a community right. that rejects these claims when we hear them? So maybe we'll talk about that during the break, but I think we got Mark back. It's, it's a great question, and we do have Mark back. Mark, you there? Mm -hmm. I'm here, yes. All right, Mark, thank you for coming back. So we were talking about R. Kelly's sentencing. What kind of sentence do you think he will get? And finish up on the RICO thing as well. Yes. Okay, so first of all, I think he's facing minimum 10 years up to life. And I think that this judge, who is a federal judge, so he has a lifetime appointment, can give R. Kelly whatever the heck he wants. And I, I think that no fewer than a few decades would speak the truth and be justice in this case for the, for the amount of victims, for the length of time, for what he did. Well, let's talk about um, some of these survivors who came forward because um, they were quite brave to do so, especially in light of what happened in 2008. So why do you think that it was more stressful for the survivors this time around than in the 2008 trial? Their testimony was so public before the trial because of the uh, the documentary that people saw. So everybody had an opinion, right? I believe I can fly. Well, it's such a great song. There's no way he could be guilty. I mean, mm -hmm. this is the mentality that's floating out there. So I think there was a lot of pressure. There was a lot of speculation. That's not normal. Normally in a criminal case, the victim's testimony is not known by the court of public opinion. It doesn't get analyzed. She or he goes into court, testifies, and the jury makes a finding. In this case, it was just very different. Yeah, uh, you know, Mark, thank you for, you know, your expertise. I think what's heart-wrenching is, to your point, right now there's people outside of that courthouse saying that this was an injustice to R. Kelly. Right. So, 
I mean, yes. I don't know where we go from here, but I'm glad that justice was finally served. Thank you so much for joining us, Mark. As always, we appreciate you. To our viewers, for more information on Mark and his law firm, you can go to speaktomark.com. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, man. Hey, Kevin, sweetheart. Good to see you guys.